Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mini Scroll, the daily internet culture podcast bringing you the biggest stories from social media, the creator economy, and the digital space every Monday through Thursday. I'm your host, Lauren Meisner, the founder of the youth digital media brand Centennial World. Welcome back to Mini Scroll, everyone. Happy Tuesday, I guess it is. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get straight into the stories because I told you guys all my life updates yesterday in the intro, so I have nothing to tell you guys today. <laughs> okay, so the first story that I have for you guys is that Rosanna Pancino has been revealing the reality behind Mr. Beast's Mr. Beast Games, alleging unsafe work conditions. This sounds like a throwback. This sounds like a story that I should have reported on like a year ago, but I promise that there is new developments. So Rosanna Pancino, a longtime YouTuber known for her baking content, is speaking out about the conditions surrounding a new Mr. Beast competition video, which could be linked to his upcoming show with Amazon Prime, Beast Games. However, according to Rosanna, the exact connection to the show remains unclear. So on July 27th, Rosanna posted a video sharing messages that she had received from various participants in the competition show. Rosanna reveals that the messages have come from a variety of people connected with Beast Games, some who were competing in the challenges and have since been eliminated, and others who are still in the competition. She notes that many have expressed concern for their own safety and for those involved. Rosanna says that she has 10 stories from 10 different people where she goes on to say that, quote, I have personally worked in entertainment for almost two decades, and what is going on here is extremely disgusting and dangerous. Rosanna goes on to read one of the messages from a contestant alleging unsafe work conditions where the basic needs of the contestants were not being met and contestants were being denied access to medicine and food. The author of the message notes that people were, quote, having seizures because they were not getting medication before revealing that the the competition was, quote, 100% rigged and favored young and athletic men over women and other contestants. To make things worse, men started realizing they could take out the women without being eliminated, the message adds. Guys started tackling and hitting women. Two girls were tackled and passed out on the field and dragged off to continue filming. I saw people with broken bones, stitches, etc., and most were women. Among the claims, the author of the message also claims that the game show set up unfair expectations. Quote, they presented it as though the game would be like Squid Games. People who went signed up for Squid Games, not for American Ninja Warrior and Survivor. <laughs> so they also said that the contestants were offered $1,000 to, quote, sign away their rights to join any kind of class action lawsuit, which is T. She has since gone on to share a number of follow-up videos expanding on the claims, many of which have allegedly been suppressed. In one of the videos, Rosanna claims that the International Allegiance of Theatrical Stage Employees categorized Beast Games as a, quote, unfair production, meaning that no union members are permitted to work on the production. Quote, this shows that Jimmy never planned to make Beast Games a union show. He wants to hire union workers. He wants the quality, but he doesn't want to pay for them, Rosanna says. So as I mentioned, this sounds like a bit of a throwback because this is not the first time that Rosanna has spoken out against Mr. Beast and his competition shows. Last year, Rosanna came forward about her experience in Mr. Beast's Creator Games, a series where social media personalities compete against each other for a $1 million prize. Among a number of claims, she alleged that Mr. Beast edited her out of the video early, revealing that she had finished in third place instead of fifth as it appeared in production. Quote, despite Jimmy editing out the only female in the top three, I was proud of what I achieved, Rosanna wrote in a statement on Twitter at the time. I followed the rules of the game, gave it my all, had fun, and never gave up. They can't take that away from me. She also revealed that other female creators had contacted her, sharing that they have had similar experiences with Mr. Beast. There is a bit of a tide turning on Mr. Beast on TikTok. I have started to get fed quite a few videos of people speculating that his downfall is coming. And we obviously spoke a little bit about that at the beginning of this year. He's still widely beloved because he's been able to play this philanthropic character where if you don't think about it too critically and he, you just kind of listen to like what he tells you about himself and his motivation, then it seems like he's using his content, his platform, his fame, his money to do way more good than not. And I think the kind of house of cards is starting to fall. The mystique around Mr. Beast is slowly kind of fading away. And I think in the next year, we might see some type of big blowback against Mr. Beast, but 
We will see. All right. And the next story that I have for you guys is, well, part of the story I didn't cover last week because I honestly just forgot to cover it. As you can imagine, when I'm like scrolling on TikTok and social media, like all throughout the day, I will find stories. I'll save them. I'll like them. I'll screenshot them, whatever, to like come back for a mini scroll the next day. And sometimes I just forget what I have screenshotted, what I have liked. I just kind of miss it. So I missed half of this story, but the other half is new. So (laughs) queens of TikTok exposés, Madeline Argy and Brooke Schofield have reunited. So since Madeline's expose about her on-again, off-again relationship with UK rapper Central C, social media users have been urging her to appear on the canceled podcast. Recently, Brooke has been posting TikToks with Madeline, and it seems like their wish might be coming true. Under their videos together, users have expressed excitement that the two are together. Quote, is Mads on the next episode of the pod? Please say yes. Get Mads on the podcast. ASAP wrote another. I mean, this is just a general sentiment, but I think because they know that people really want to see them together, like they really want Mads to go on canceled. I think Brooke posting all of this, like it makes total sense that she would go on canceled and that they would both kind of capitalize on this moment right now for them. So all of this came off the back of Ice Spice last week shading Madeline. So for context, Madeline alleged that she was being used in a PR stunt amid rumors that Central C was seeing Leah Holton and Ice Spice all while he was allegedly dating Madeline. This was in the lead up to Ice Spice and Central C releasing a song together. While Ice Spice hasn't responded directly, she did post a TikTok last week with the caption, Mood after taking her mans. And Madeline even commented on the TikTok writing, why? (laughs) That is some serious shade. Even though it's like kind of funny, (laughs) like it is objectively like shady and funny, obviously like just so savage. Obviously what happened to Madeline was very upsetting, very traumatic. I'm sure it's not funny to her, (laughs) but she's handling this very, very well. All right, and the last thing that I just wanted to touch on was that I have seen that The Times, who published the Ballerina Farm article, which is, like, not dying down. It is, like, blowing up even more since it came out. Like, my whole For You page is just stuff about Ballerina Farm. Like, people cannot stop talking about this article. Um, I saw that they actually published a podcast episode where they share clips of the audio that Ballerina Farmer, like Hannah and her and Daniel, you can hear them talking in it and like answering the journalist questions and stuff. And I guess it's giving a little bit more insight into the context of the interview, the questions being asked, how they were answering them, their tone, things like that. I haven't listened to the full episode. I've just heard clips here and there on TikTok. Obviously, there's a lot of people that are like now taking that and saying, oh my God, it's so obvious now. Like she's saying that she loves this life. It's so obvious now that, you know, the journalist had some type of agenda when publishing this and reporting on this. I am not in that camp. I think the journalist reported on something that she was given. Like you can't report on something that you're not given. They, she reported on what directly came from their mouths the exact interactions that she had. Of course, she's going to, you know, infer certain things based on, I guess, her own biases or opinions. But it's also from context clues of like being on the farm and seeing how everything works and the interaction that she had with them and watching them interact together and all of this. So I just thought I would mention that I haven't listened to the podcast. But if you guys are interested in more of this ballerina farm stuff and want to kind of, I guess, I don't know, dive into it deeper. There is a podcast episode now. All right, guys. Well, that's it for Mini Scroll. Thank you so much for listening. As always, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. It helps me so much. It helps me grow. We are on that journey to 5K, the 5K journey. We are almost there on YouTube, I mean. So please subscribe. But if you guys listen on podcasts, please also subscribe on podcasts. We have a lot more than 5K subscribers, but I would love you anyways. (laughs) Okay. Thank you guys. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.